In this video, I wanted to talk about how I use this thing here to convert these uh, underlayment sheets used for uh, laminate floors, like the one I'm sitting on right now, and to turn it into things like this. This is the Eintracht Frankfurt soccer team lo logo, or into airplane wings, like this one. You may not be able to see it, but it also can do creases here. Um, here is a little Mother's Day cutout. Um, this is the scrap. Um, how does it work? Well, here on this thing here, I mean, this, this basic thing here is uh, similar to the laser cutters. That's where I got the idea uh, from. Uh, and then here we've got this reciprocating uh, needle cutter thing, which I also found online. Um, this thing here goes on there. This bearing with this wire goes. I have it taken apart so I can uh, show you. Um, I have a servo motor here from uh, RC car uh, servo, standard size uh, for like uh, one tenth scale uh, cars to go up and down. You have a very high tech half of a uh, clothespin. Um, the axes here are basically um, open builds style or similar to uh, 3D printers. I'm using these rounded over um, wheels here instead of the open open builds ones because I got the wrong size extrusions here. These are 2020 um, aluminum extrusions. This right here is 2040. Uh, the slot is a five millimeter. It should be a six millimeter. And because it's skinnier, the belt here doesn't fit properly in there. Uh, and also the wheel, the open builds wheels um, don't ride on there either. So instead I'm using these white um, rounded over ones like you would see on a uh, uh, 3D printer. The problem with that <clears throat> is that the bearing in here um, squeezes between the extrusion and the, the, the belt is squeezed. So really there's no clearance and that slows down things overall. If these white balls had a, uh, uh, white bearings had a bigger diameter, even a little bit, then that would lift this, these bearings here up a little bit higher and we would have clearance and everything would be fine. Um, so really the open builds way is a better way to go, but this is the extrusions that I had. Um, as said before, I have some eight millimeter rod here. I've got some sleeve bearings uh, in here. They're hot glued onto this uh, red plate here. Um, for uh, getting things up and down. I also tried uh, as an original proto as a first prototype, I did just a pen so I could uh, uh, draw, but now here I've got this reciprocating thing. I've had a number of issues with getting this piano wire, this piano wire here to actually stick to the bearing. Um, Online, folks say that they can just, if you just have it tight around there, it holds on and it sort of does hold on, uh, but I found it popped off a lot. Um, it kind of sucks, you're a couple minutes into cutting one of these things and then the thing pops up and so then what do you do? Uh, I originally tried, uh, this is an earlier prototype. These are two prototypes that I did before. This right here is basically what you would find on Thingiverse by other folks that have done the needle cutters. Um, it also had this little wooden faceplate when I used it to try to hold uh, the wire in place. Um, that still wasn't, wasn't bomb proof. So then what I tried is I, um, um, I soldered the wire onto the bearing and surprisingly the solder actually does wet stick to the, uh, the bearing itself. I guess since they're cheap bearings, they're not actually stainless steel. Uh, they don't really stick to, the solder doesn't really stick to the uh, piano wire, uh, but that was sort of okay because it would just kind of wrap around. 
Uh, but in the end, I think that the heat from the uh, soldering causes the, um, the piano wire to be more fragile, and so therefore uh, it snapped uh, right here at the bearing. Um, this is my most recent one, um, which I think I, which I made today. I think I may have screwed it up because I have here um, both sides coming down and glued. Now I'm epoxying, and that works pretty good. Because um, my most recent one, it snapped here mid-body. So there's really a lot going on in here. Um, so the biggest challenge has been getting the needle part to actually stay alive. All right, so talked a little bit about my prototypes. This one here, originally I just had a hole and I would screw this welding tip onto it. Uh, the problem, and this is also uh, experienced by others online, uh, is that um, this welding tip gets hot, or at least warm enough that this PLA starts to get soft. And then as you're moving around, the forces cause this thing to bend over, and then eventually just the whole thing bound and nothing worked anymore. So heat dissipation here is an issue. Then for this one, as well as this one, um, here I have a piece of um, copper clad uh, printed circuit board uh, material, hole drilled into it and then soldered onto there here. Um, and that, so now that I have no issues down here as well. Also I found that once I had glued or soldered the, um, the needle onto the bearing, uh, there's really no more need to have this faceplate anymore. Um, about the motor and all that um, here. This is the motor that I'm using now, and I think it's a much better uh, alternative than what is suggested online. The online ones have recommend a bigger motor. Um, there's really not a lot of force involved here, so a sm the smallest motor, RC motor you can find is fine. But really the key here is that um, this one is threaded, this one here is not. And so this run, this is the original um, one that I used. Note that it has here an inset bearing to act as a counterbalance to the bearing that goes here. Um, but the problem here is that it's a press fit plastic onto, or PLA onto this shaft. Um, and again, when this thing here heated up, the motor just started spinning around inside of here and it didn't work. Um, so instead, this guy here, I've got a little bolt here that fits inside of here. And then I thread it onto there. And as it rotates, of course, you have to make sure that it's rotating in the right direction. From the needle's vantage point, it doesn't matter which way it's going, but from the point of this uh, bolt, you want it to be self-tightening uh, as it turns. Uh, this right here, with this motor here, I have had no issues. It, it works great. Um, so, talking about motors a little bit, I'm using a electronic speed controller used in RC airplanes or uh, quadcopters. Works great. Uh, the main thing to be uh, aware of, and I control it with this uh, uh, ESC tester. The main thing to be aware of is that if your machine crashes or something happens and you need to turn it off, you turn off power, but you don't hear, you don't actually turn off the uh, the servo tester thing here, you power it back up, and then it says, oh, you're in calibration mode because I don't see a minimum size um, signal coming in. And so then everything really acts weird. The way to get around that, if you're not a, a radio control person, is you power, you, pow you power down the speed controller, you crank up the um, tester all the way to max, then you... Uh, power on the speed controller again, and it does a whole bunch of beeping. Then you put your speed controller uh, servo tester thing here back to zero, power everything down, and so then that's, that's a calibration cycle. Uh, because before, if you start with um, the, uh, the servo tester here not on minimum, then it thinks that you're calibrating, and so then it sees that other value uh, as the maximum uh, throttle. Since every radio controller, every speed con uh, tester, every whatever has slightly different timing, uh, this is a way to calibrate for that. 
Um, as mentioned before, I think I use a servo here, standard size servo to have everything go up and down. Um, one thing is that this one here draws enough current that um, I can get some voltage drop, which before I had one um, five volt power supply. This is a Amazon Kindle um, USB charger thing, All right? So not the, the cheapest, <coughs> you know, not the, not, the, the, not the most El Cheapo, uh, but it was not able to provide enough uh, voltage stability and I got uh, resets here on my uh, Arduino. So instead, I now use two uh, five volt power supplies. I think if I used a real power supply, uh, that pop problem would probably go away, but I'm using the pieces that I have. Um, talking a little bit about the uh, actual uh, motion parts here. Here I've got, comes like this. This is also, none of this is my idea, it's just my combination of all of it. So the way you adjust the tension Right, because see this goes up and down as you move this way. Um, which this is really just two of these um, that squeeze together. The uh, wheel goes in here and so then like that, and then I can put a bolt in here to then um, to adjust the tensioning. So for on the electronic side, as I sort of mentioned before, I use this little board here and a piece of cardboard. Got a Bluetooth module. I've got a power supply. I've got a Arduino Pro Mini, I think it is. I've got a CNC uh, driver board with three of the DRV8825 uh, stepper drivers, which then drive these NEMA 17s. Um, two on the, <clears throat> on the X, one on the Y, and then the Z is the servo. I use this, uh, fancy dancy uh, 12 volt power supply, uh, 24 volt, uh, excuse me, uh, for driving the uh, steppers as well as the uh, motor here. 12 is probably gonna, would also work fine. Um, not really much to say about that, running on uh, Gerbil or running Gerbil on it. So that's that. Um, holding down, <clears throat> here I am on your uh, simple IKEA laminate floor. Um, so a fairly flat, smooth surface. Um, so basically I have what amounts to a vacuum table. This is one side. This is the other, other side. Okay. Which means that I get sort of a vacuum action of holding the whole thing down. And then this thing here holds my work table. There are a bunch of holes that I've cut in here to also then hold down my actual workpiece. Um, I originally used this chute here to suck the air, sort of like this, right? Using the vacuum cleaner I've got here behind me, just a regular old household vacuum, or it's, it's actually, well, yeah. A canister style, not the upright, like most people in the US at least would know. Um, the problem is that it reduces my work area because the uh, gantry here can't go over it. So instead what I'm using now is I use um, this thing here. So it goes into this slot here like this, right? The whole thing goes on the floor and then um, the vacuum holds everything in place. It works very nicely. I'm very pleased with that. Um, so all in all, 
it works pretty well. Uh, my main issue is getting um, these needle things here to not snap. Um, and if I can actually not be an idiot and actually have the right size, then epoxying has worked well. Uh, soldering sort of worked well, but I think it loosened or uh, it weakened the wire. Um, yeah. So there's also a number of computer related issues um, in Inkscape and Fusion 360 type uh, G-code generation uh, that I can go into next.